We're live, 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 live. We're live. How you guys doing? Sorry, I'm just setting up here scrambling like crazy to get this show ready. How are you guys doing today? Welcome to the 8 o'clock primetime show, Traveling with Bruce. Uh, Bruce, who is not quite ready uh, because he's scrambling like crazy right now, but here he is. Okay, Bruce is ready. How are you, everybody? How you doing? Uh, I'm recovering from the 5 o'clock show and getting ready for this 8 o'clock show. And uh, I'll tell you, what a day. Uh, I've had a busy one. I'm going to sleep like a log tonight. <laughs> Just sleep. Uh, I just had a wonderful uh, communication with uh, with a traveler uh, who was on the uh, Norwegian Sun cruise ship. Uh, yeah, they were on the ship. They're contacting LA television stations. Uh, I guess they have kind of a they have sort of one of those uh, consumer reports type, uh, you know, uh, reporters that sort of you know look out for the little guy. And uh, just don't mind me. I'll keep adjusting my. I think uh, they have a they have a reporter that sort of looks out for the little guy, and um, uh, they're, they're, they've contacted the, the station, and uh, they're telling them about the nightmare cruise that they've been on, and a load of goods that they were sold, and the uh, the unbelievable conditions they were on. And well, this will be interesting to see if the uh, local TV station picks up the story. I, I tell you, it's just unbelievable. Uh, so uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, uh, and everyone's kicking back in. Everyone's signing back in. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, Thanks for uh, for joining in right now. I, th I think we've got 14 of you here so far. Already got a couple of thumbs ups. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, I'm just uh, happy that you folks are back. We're going to play some trivia tonight. I've got some travel trivia all set up for you guys. And uh, we'll have some fun with that. Uh, we'll see what gives here. I'm just double checking all my stuff. Oh, my goodness. There's so much going on. I got emails, messages coming in. It's fantastic. Uh, lo lovely to be busy. Anyway, uh, for those of you who have never been here before, <laughs> and for those of you who are watching this video not even today you might be watching this video like uh tomorrow or uh you found you heard about my channel uh you discovered me somehow and uh you know it's a week later uh it's a week after today like today is april the 5th 2018 just to give you a heads up it's thursday night just after 8 p.m eastern time uh so let's say it's let's pretend it's April 12th, and you found out about my channel, and you stumbled on this video, and you're wondering, well, what's this guy doing? Playing trivia on that thing? What's going on? Who is this guy? Well, it's Bruce with a channel called Traveling with Bruce on YouTube, and I live three miles just north of the U.S. border. I'm in Canada. I'm in the great white north. How you doing? And I can see uh, Idaho out of the living room window where I live, except today uh, and other days when it's like this. It's raining out, and it's a bit kind of you know, yucky and foggy. So I can't see Idaho today. It's it's like I can only see a mile, and then it's yuck. So um, Idaho, like like me, northern Idaho is getting wet, and uh, we're keeping the dust down. And uh, you know, the breeding ground for mosquitoes is underway. So when uh, you know when summer hits, we'll be hit with the bugs. Anyway, uh, winter is slowly going away. Spring is coming in, but it's a bit cool feeling outside. It's probably about 32, 33 degrees, so it's not fun. I love talking about cruise ships. I love talking about going on cruise ship vacations, uh, how you can find a good deal on a cruise. I answer a lot of questions for people who are thinking about going on a cruise, uh, the kind of cruise line they should consider taking, depending on you know what their needs and interests are. But here's what I'm not. I'm not a travel agent. I'm not employed by a cruise company. I, I, I don't book cruises for anybody. I, I don't make any money on the back end uh, you know, referring you somewhere. I'm just a guy sitting in front of a computer, telling you he loves cruise ships. That's all. And I uh, uh, love talking about cruise ships, and I love talking about really good news when, cruise, when there's good news. I love talking about great, successful cruises when there are great, successful cruises. But sometimes, like today and the last couple of days, I've been forced to have to talk about a cruise like the one on the Norwegian Sun going through the Panama Canal and creating all kinds of problems for all kinds of people, not only on the cruise itself, but now after the cruise, because a bunch of toxic chemicals were on the deck of that ship and a bunch of construction workers popped out from below deck on the uh, second day of the cruise and all hell broke loose uh, when they started stripping the deck, uh, the decks, actually decks, uh, with these paint thinners and these, these uh, glue solvents and, Oh, just I can't imagine some of the 
toxic chemicals you have to use to get the deck stripped off in the first place to read put the new deck on and there are passengers in bathing suits not hazmat suits bathing suits right 20 feet over here uh and they're getting showered with this metallic -y kind of dust from the sanders and from the jackhammers that are also breaking up parts of it this stuff is floating up into the air and coming down and raining down into the pool and there's scum on the surface of the pool and gunk in the bottom of the pool if you were to sit down on a on a stool by the bar for a drink you had to get a towel which you had to shake off first and wipe the stool because if you didn't and just used your finger and went like this on the stool your tip of your finger would be black from the dust this construction dust it was everywhere it was everywhere people were making videos and they're posting it on facebook at one in the morning jackhammers are going above them on the deck above them at one in the morning this is a 24 7 operation it was authorized by head office from norwegian and the captain had no say in the matter and uh, lives were put in danger uh unbelievable uh debbie manuel i see that thank you debbie <laughs> super chat thank you so much i'll talk about that in a sec um Terrible, just terrible. Uh, the the there were people going to the uh, to the medical room on board the cruise with the skin uh, rashes that they 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 were getting from exposure to the fumes of the paint thinner and the glues and everything else. They were reacting to it. Uh, body you know body perspiration and then this chemical in the air and in the high enough concentrations, you name it. They were going down there for treatment. They still wouldn't stop working. Uh, people were having trouble breathing on board in their rooms because a cabin on a cruise ship, as, as all of us know as cruisers, if you don't know, as a newbie, uh, cruise cabins are generally quite small. They're the size of the bed plus about three feet around the bed <laughs> for an inside room anyway. Uh, so you've got 140 feet, 150 square feet of space. Uh, so if you've got uh, the ventilation system putting through some kind of a chemical compound you shouldn't be breathing in that small amount of space, it wouldn't take much for uh, the particulates to gather and make it uncomfortable for you to breathe. People were having trouble breathing. Faint, they were getting ready to faint. They were getting out of their rooms, walking into larger, more airy areas of the ship. They couldn't go outside because all that crap was coming down on them there, uh, trying to, to escape this stuff. And again, they were going downstairs for help from the doctors, the doctor and nurse on board. They still wouldn't stop the work. Um, Terrible, just terrible. Uh, I've got so much about it, but the show I did at five o'clock is a show you want to watch because I went on a long rant about it. And uh, I just feel so sorry for the people who are stuck on this cruise. 2,000 paying customers had no idea. They were on a toxic chemical laden cruise ship that was about to be ripped apart on them. And they were denied access to large portions of the public areas of the cruise they paid for in advance. And uh, the only compensation that uh, Norwegian is saying is uh, they're going to give them a 25% credit on a future cruise with Norwegian based on how much they paid for their rooms. So rather than giving them 25% of their money back, no, I'm not getting any of your money back. We're keeping all your money. We'll let you spend another 75% on the next cruise with us. You trust these guys? You think these folks are interested in another Norwegian cruise right now? They don't have anything to do with these guys. They lied to them. They hoodwinked them, they ripped them off. And they're gathering together now as a group because there's strength in numbers. They're putting the word out that they've had enough. And um, there's about 600 plus now uh, in a YouTube group, in a Facebook group that's only about four days old. And uh, they're contacting legal teams for help. They're looking for help. And right now the court of public opinion is the one that Norwegian is paying and it's beginning to build. This story is beginning to build. I've heard in the last hour that Fox News is running the story on their internet sites. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether CNN or NBC or anyone else or Fox themselves starts running it on television uh, because this is an unforgivable faux pas. There were children on board, uh, pregnant women were on board this cruise, surrounded by toxic chemicals that can cause birth defects. They had no idea. Uh, there were seniors on board, cruise of a lifetime, the Panama Canal. That one last cruise, the bucket list cruise, this might kill them. This cruise could kill them. It, it's unbelievable. People are going to the doctor. They're talking about this on, this, on, the, on the Facebook page. They're going to their doctors complaining about chest irritations, bleeding noses, they're bleeding, uh, and a cough that won't go away. 
Thank you, Norwegian Cruise Lines. Thank you very much. The unforgivable part, even more unforgivable, they were doing the same thing on the same ship, the cruise before this cruise. Before the Panama cruise, they were doing construction then too, and there were complaints on that cruise, and people have seen the doctor since that cruise. So, And there was no compensation offered on that cruise because it, it wasn't uh, a big kerfuffle yet. Now it's a kerfuffle. And here's the other one. This ship is in dry dock right now in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. On April 19th, two weeks from today, it starts cruising again with paying passengers. The first cruise coming up is an 18-night cruise starting in Seattle, going to Vancouver, Victoria, then down the coast through the Panama Canal all the way to Port Canaveral. And the question is, will there be construction workers still on this vessel doing the finishing work with the lacquers and the paints and all kinds of other toxic chemicals. The workers, by the way, were wearing masks, hazmat suits, right 10 feet over here were people in bathing suits. Hazmat suit, bathing suit, 10 feet, do the math. It's not good. It's just not good. So unbelievable uh, uh, story. It just uh, blew me away. Uh, I'm uh, I'm just so upset for people about it. I can't believe uh, what was done to these folks, uh, how they were treated, uh, and how they're being uh, uh, treated now. It's uh, really sad, and um, it's it's just too bad. So uh, I don't know what to say. Um, I don't know what to uh, what to make of it. I've got a viewer uh, on uh, Facebook uh, wants to talk to me about this cruise, and I'm asking this person. Come to my YouTube channel. Hang on. Come to come to visit me on YouTube now. Let's see what happens. And uh, anyway, folks, uh, it used to be a lot easier. It's not that easy anymore. Uh, this is a sad story. I enjoy uh, going on a cruise with Norwegian. Love Norwegian Cruise Lines. But, oh, they blew it on this one big time. And offering them a credit on a future cruise, you got to be kidding. Come on. You can't. You can't. You can't be kidding. You can't be serious. I'm going to say hi to my people who've been writing in, because this is what we do. Uh, if you're watching me, sign in. Tell me where you're watching me from. Just type in. Tell me what town are you watching me from. What was your high temperature today? If you're a cruiser on that cruise ship, please tell me you were on that ship. I've got questions for you. I, I, my, my folks will, will say hi to you. Um, if you have a question about cruising, you're new to cruising, you have any kind of questions about cruising, bring it on. If I can answer it on the spot, I will. If I can't. Uh, my my viewers here, I got a bunch of folks here who cruise all the time. They'd be happy to answer the question. They'll help me with it, or they'll correct me if I blow it. <laughs> that happens. That that does happen. Uh, okay, let's see what's going on. Uh, Richard Kornmaski, Bruce, love your show. Uh, uh, see the main comment page on the Sun. Uh, I'll ha I haven't got time, but I will eventually. PJ Drayton is here. Hello from Omaha. Welcome from Omaha, Nebraska. Fantastic. Can't Tammy Ray. Hello again. Welcome back, Tammy. Gaylene Davidson. Hi, Bruce Rainey in Summerland. That's Summerlin, British Columbia, where I am in this province. Four degrees where she is. It's kind of the same here. Welcome, Gaylene. It's uh, just just like it's just saying, yeah, it's yucky. Debbie Manuel, I'm back. Welcome, Debbie. De West Morrison, hello from New Braunfels, Texas. West Morrison, he's got the best weather in the United States. Uh, it's so consistently good, it's unbelievable. I, I don't know how he does it, but he he, he knows somebody. It's unbelievable. Uh, Scott Batchley, hi, Bruce. I made it. Uh, I made it. Nice day in Ventura, 63 and sunny. Welcome back, sir. Uh, Debbie Gavassi, hello from Florida. Debbie, hi. You gotta be new. You gotta be new. I do not recognize that name. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, this is great. Uh, fantastic. T tell me if you're new. This is this is wonderful. Tommy Eaton, two thumbs ups. Tommy Eaton, hey from Jacksonville, Florida. How you doing, Tommy? Welcome back, buddy. Sea Keeper, Sea Lid Keeper. Uh, hi, Bruce. We are sitting outside. <laughs> Just rub it in. 78 degrees Fahrenheit, South Florida. I just emailed you. There are no mosquitoes here. Ha! <laughs> That's a regular. Yeah, that's a regular. Debbie Manuel sent me an orange bar on my super chats. She sent me a ten dollar donation right there. God bless you, Debbie Manuel. You are so wonderful. One of my uh, top supporters. I just love you. I felt out of the super chats this afternoon. She saw all those. She saw a bunch of super chats come in today. She she, she wanted to get on the party. I you gotta love that. Thank you so much, Nancy Nolan. Just subscribe, Nancy Nolan. Just subscribe. This is great. Booked our first cruise uh, in about 15 years on the Norwegian cruise uh, cruise line Bliss for next October. Nancy, this is great. Welcome to the channel. Uh, 
I think you're going to be okay on the Bliss. Uh, it's a new ship. It's not going to be under refurbishment. They're not going to strip the decks on you, I'm sure. It's too soon for that. <laughs> so you'll be okay. Uh, but Nancy, uh, if you become a regular viewer of mine, and I hope you will, uh, you're going to be telling us how that cruise is going to turn out for you because everyone else does the same thing. I've got people who go on cruises and they immediately tell me how it went, and I pass it on to everybody else. And I have a viewer right now, literally, as we are talking here, um, who's at sea, who's been watching our shows. Well, he won't miss the shows, even on the cruise. And he's been telling me he's in St. Thomas, and he was over here, and today he had a nap. He's killing us. But Wi-Fi as it is, he's saying hi, and he's watching the show. It's incredible. I love it. Fantastic. Nancy, welcome to this channel. This is great. Tammy Ray, I figured it weird to think of jackhammers being used on a ship. Y yeah. You know, normally jackhammers are used to break things up. <laughs> To you know, take things apart. Oh, I, I just tell you, it's crazy. Uh, Debbie Manuel, Nancy, so excited for you. Welcome to the channel. And I'm going on the Bliss as well in 86 days. Can't wait. So, Nancy, she's going to uh, beat you to the punch and then she'll tell you how it is. So, I'll give you a heads up on how what you should be looking for. Fantastic. Tommy Eaton, welcome aboard. Nancy, uh, Richard Kormaski, to educate your viewers, search Cruise Mapper, Cruise Fever, Cruise Hive, and it lists all dry dock for four years out. Guess what? The sun was on these lists as extensive. People need to do the homework. Well, I, I hear you. Uh, I haven't got a problem with a ship going to dry dock. I don't have a problem with a ship going to dry dock. As a matter of fact, I love it when a ship goes to dry dock because it means that the cruise line is sinking cash into that cruise ship. Serious money. It's three million bucks a day for every day that it's at dry dock. You know, you take, worst you got to take it off service. So there's no money coming in. The casinos are closed. The bars are closed. The especially restaurants are closed. There's no money coming in. Two, you're spending money on hundreds, if not thousands of workers simultaneously all over that ship. Engine room work. Air conditioning work, refrigeration, the kitchen area, the, the, the staffing area, the bridge, the cabins themselves, the public areas, the flooring. I mean, the whole ship. Can you imagine how many gazillions of people are working on this thing 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that that ship is sitting there? It's three million bucks a day average cost to the cruise line. So 20-day dry dock, 60 million bucks. You got 60 million lying around? That's serious money. But, and here's the big but, okay? You do dry dock work in the dry dock. You don't do dry dock work. That means with hazardous chemicals, hazardous components, where you need fire suppression systems all around the work area, which is what dry dock has, you don't do it on a cruise ship at sea with 2,000 paying customers, women, children, and seniors on the same ship. That's the the rule, you don't break that rule. And Norwegian has done it for two cruises in a row. Not two weeks. No, 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 no. Not two weeks in a row. Two cruises in a row. There must have been a seven-day cruise and then this 16-day cruise. That's 23 days of dry dock work they were doing at sea with paying customers on board. That's a no-no. That should be an absolute no-no. And how do you look for that? There's no website to go to check that out. Cruise Norwegian didn't send out a message to the travel agent saying, "Oh, listen, by the way, uh, you know, uh, you know that Caribbean cruise that uh, we're putting the sun out on. Uh, we're going to have 25 construction guys on board with turpentine, paint thinner, uh, jackhammers. Uh, so sorry for the inconvenience. No, they don't do that. Why would they do that? No one will book a cruise on a cruise like that. That's a dry dock cruise." They didn't say anything about that. And then on the ship going through the, 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 the trip, going through the Panama Canal, the dream of a lifetime cruise for people, bucket list cruises are Panama cruises. These are rare. They're, they're not like every day. They take quite a while. Some of these take two weeks, three weeks to accomplish. They didn't advertise that that ship would have a bunch of these guys on board ripping the bejesus out of the deck, roping off half the top deck that you couldn't even use swimming pools. The kiddie pools were all closed down. They didn't mention that. Why would they mention that? People won't book that cruise. No, they didn't mention it. And that ship was sold out with innocent passengers paying top dollar, some flying from Ireland, the United Kingdom, from Europe to Miami to get on this ship. And they got sucked in because that's what happened to them. They got taken advantage of by 
Norwegian cruise lines who didn't have, they didn't have the courtesy to tell anybody. And in effect, why would you do it in the first place? You shouldn't even be doing this work at sea because this is a disaster waiting to happen. Just saying, Richard, you got a good point about looking up the information. I don't mind that. That's cool. I'm good with that. But doing this kind of work at sea with paying passengers on board? Mm -mm, not, not cool, man. Not cool. Tammy Ray, Nancy Nolan, the Bliss looks like a great ship. Richard Kormaski had the exact date and cruise it was on. Why spend so much money at what was as a victim? Have we lost our common sense? Well, you know, I wouldn't book a cruise if I knew they were going to have boys on this ship tearing it apart with turpentine and paint thinner. Yeah, I wouldn't, but I didn't, I wouldn't have known. I kind of feel guilty had, if I've even mentioned this cruise in the last couple of months. Have I mentioned this cruise as a great deal through the Panama Canal? If I have, I'd feel terrible because how am I to know that they're going to have these guys on board this thing? It's ridiculous. Nancy's saying, thanks all. Nice to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Sorry, I'm on a rant, but this is a story that just has to be told. Uh, Sylvia, hello, everyone. 60 degrees in Greensboro. Tammy Ray, uh, Richard, I checked out my next two cruises. I booked, I should be good. Nancy Nolan, Tammy Ray, yes, it does. Looking forward to the bliss. Doing the Mexican Riviera Cruise, fantastic. That's going to be great. Tammy Ray, that'll be fun. Richard Kermaski, why doesn't Bruce tell us to look at these sites to educate his viewers? You know, why is Bruce so, you know, hiding everything from us? Why Why does he do that? Why am I trying to hide from you the, the true facts of what's going on? I mean, uh, I'm not a travel agent. I'm not a cruise line employee. I, I'm a guy who loves to go on cruises. When I heard about this ship, I was shocked, shocked about this ship. Now, I do know there are sites out there about uh, dry dock. Yeah. And I've mentioned on previous videos, a couple months ago, I mentioned about the cruises you don't want to go on. And what was one of the cruises I talked about that you don't want to go on? The cruise before a dry dock. What's the other cruise I talked about you don't want to go on? The cruise after the dry dock. What's another cruise I told you not to go on? Theme cruises where Ted Nugent is the lead act and you want a quiet cruise. You don't want to go on that cruise. The other cruise you don't want to go on, the drunk cruise at spring break. You remember that video? I did that video. Richard, I think you were around when I did that video. So I've talked about this. I'm telling you. Telling you. Uh, Debbie, Richard, uh, Bruce did give the site to check out when ships will be in dry dock. Tammy Ray, Richard, Bruce has told people to check sites on future, <laughs> future cruises about dry dock. Richard, I didn't recall. What sites did he speak of? <laughs> it's okay, Richard. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Uh, Nina Frank, hi, Bruce, and all in time for round two. Yaki Hiri in Sweden, two degrees Celsius. Hope NCL sinks with this. <laughs> <laughs> they're going down, she's saying. They're going down. David Holoka is here. I was on the first cruise from Phoenixville, PA, 41 degrees here today and sunny. I was on the first cruise from Phoenixville. I was on the first. What does that mean? I, I, I need a little more. Terry is here. Terry, you're here. Oh, you're wonderful. Terry Pereira is here. Hi, Bruce. I was on the cruise from hell, and Norwegian is now offering us 100% on the price paid for this cruise on a future cruise to be used until 2023, what a joke. So now they're offering you a free cruise, but not your money back. That, that's what they're saying, I think. S. Swan is saying Norwegian will be paying more than $25 credit. People don't like hearing about bad health problems, especially when they didn't cause it themselves, Sylvia says. Nina Frank, I forgot all about their uh, <laughs> blood do studios laughing out loud. Terry said, goes on to say, I'm so glad you're here, Terry. They don't include any of the port charges or any of the expenses we had to incur in order to take this cruise. That was ruined. Debbie Manuel, Terry, were you on the sun last week? She was. She was. Uh, James Bond, I think we're alone now. <laughs> James Bond. Uh, Nina Frank, you was you uh, were there, Terry. Uh, James Bond, Trump 2020. Oh, good luck with that. Uh, Gary M is here. Hi, Bruce. Uh, uh, Petrolia, Ontario, 3 degrees Celsius. The NCL sun is a very important conversation topic. There were seasoned agents who were not aware work was happening at sea. See that? 11-day Norwegian dawn, uh, January 6, 2019. Very interesting. Terry, yes, I was on that cruise. Nina, so this was Trump's fault, James Bond? <laughs> Debbie Manuel, Terry, were there places on the ship that you could actually get away from all the problems or smell on board? Was there, were there any places safe? Terry, I'm so glad you're here. You're getting all these questions. Just, just answer when you can and take your time. And uh, uh, we'd love to hear from you on this. Anyone else who was on that ship, I'm praying they come to these live chats because 
You can tell us what's going on. We are dying to know. Richard Kormaski, NCL Bliss is not scheduled for four years. That's true. Uh, Bruce, uh, no, I thought you gave information to new cruisers. Why not point to the dry dock ship schedules to avoid them just in case they do what happened on the sun? Uh, S. Swan, rant on, Bruce, rant on. <laughs> Laughing out loud, Sylvia. Richard, the Russians caused the sun event for CNN. That's what it is. It was the Russians. Uh, it's a conspiracy, you know. Uh, it was the UK people to avoid Brexit. It was, it was a, you know, it's a deflection on Brexit. And you know what it was? It was probably uh, this Russian agents that were working on the deck. They were trying to get a double agent. They were trying to kill a double agent, but it didn't work. And they, in, they in, inconvenienced 2,000 regular people. Was that it? I don't know. I know. Terry, we could go inside to the Dazzle Lounge and try to get away from the noise and the fumes. Yeah, you know, there were there were probably a few and far between places on the ship you could go. And I've been ranting on about how the fumes from the decks above, that the, 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 the contaminated air that, you know, was being created on the decks, it would in, in, inevitably find its way into the ventilation system of the ship itself and would then be circulated through the vent systems throughout the whole ship. So it might only be one millionth of a particle, you know, a, a very small amount. But th these are carcinogenic, highly toxic, poisonous fumes that don't do any good in any quantity to anyone. And I worry about those workers in the basement of the ship, the bottom of the ship, the, the, the folks doing the laundry, doing the dishes, uh, preparing our meals, uh, working on the storage areas, uh, the janitorial guys, uh, the staff sleeping in their quarters between shifts down below. The only air circulation they've got is the ship's ventilation system. They don't have open portholes to the outside. They're below the waterline. And these folks are badly inconvenienced with this and they're they're in danger they're in physical danger and uh it's just terrible it's just absolutely terrible debbie how about uh any dining venues she was curious about and then terry went on to say the inside dining rooms were okay but you could not dine outside because of the noise and the dust uh this is just uh, just terrible david holoka i was on the cruise before the panama canal and they were working on the sun dust everywhere sun decks and bar closed my wife and I have a cough since that cruise. Should we go to the doctor? The answer is yes. Uh, others have been going to the doctor already. Uh, chest x-rays have been ordered. Uh, you should check this out. Uh, really double check this out. Um, the hope is that you may have caught a, uh, a cold or a, a bug from a fellow passenger out of 2,000 others plus the 1,000 crew, uh, and it took a few days to germinate. But on the other hand, you know maybe it was from the particulates I just don't know. And uh, you do want to get checked out for that. It would be really a good idea to do so, David. Uh, so this is interesting. Were they doing the kind of work, if you won't mind me asking, were they, were they doing the kind of work that we're talking about here for the second cruise, this Panama Canal cruise? Were they literally stripping decks? Were they wearing hazmat suits or, or face masks for the, for the dust? Were they, was it that kind of work? Were there cans of this... Uh, uh, a chemical all over the place, all kinds of different chemicals, because that's what I'm seeing pictures of on the YouTube, on the uh, Facebook site. I'm really curious about that. Terry is saying we were on deck four, and our deck had fans trying to ventilate and get rid of those horrible smells, and that's the issue too. You didn't have an outside fresh air system. You were stuck with what you had, and uh, it was ter. It had to have been just terrible. I uh, really, really am upset about that. Yeah, the Russians were sure behind this ridiculous. <laughs> Nina said, Debbie Manuel, oh, that so sucks. Sorry, not a great trip. Do you feel like you would ever want to go on that ship ever again, free or not? Terry, we went with our friends, and he developed a cough immediately after we boarded. Immediately. Tried to get go to the ship doctor, but it was 200 bucks. 200 bucks to see you. Otherwise, don't come in here. That's just great. Debbie Manuel, oh, yes, David. Get a checkup at the very least, Debbie is saying to you. John B., 30 degrees in northern New York, going to the Bliss in New Year's Cruise in 2019 should be great. I, I'm sure be great. Terry, for, yes, Bruce, they were ripping out decks. They were ripping out decks. David Holka, yes, they were stripping the deck on the whole right side of the ship, wearing suits, masks. The pictures you have, saw, you have shown, we saw them, and we had they we had the smell as well. So this was at least uh, 23 days of work being done before going to dry dock. Absolutely ridiculous. I will never sail on Norwegian again, Terry says. Can you blame her for that? Unbelievable. So, Terry, just make sure I got this right. Uh, to, to help clarify this for me. 
did you receive an email today or, or some kind of communication today from uh, Norwegian directly that informed you as a passenger of the Panama cruise that you're uh, eligible to receive a 100% free future cruise equal to the value of the cruise you've taken uh, as opposed to any kind of a cash refund? Am I, am I kind of getting, am I reading that right? I'm just kind of curious. Curious. Uh, please let me know when you when you can type that back in for us. Uh, I'd be curious though, because the the last I had heard up until you know, half an hour ago, before I started the show, was that uh, the offer on the table from Norwegian, which was made, I believe, when the passengers were on board the ship. I'm not 100 percent sure. Was a 25 percent uh, cruise credit, a credit towards a future cruise, equal to 25 percent of what they had paid for their cruise that they had just taken. Uh, Terry said, we got a message on our Facebook page, Panama Canal Sun page, about 45 minutes ago. Okay, that is the Facebook page that I've been referring to to my viewers that I've been watching uh, since this. Well, I've been watching it for a couple of days, but this morning I contacted the page. I introduced myself to the administrator, I think it was Marianne, and uh, I asked if it would be okay, if uh, would I be allowed to use any photos from anyone on the uh, page? for a video I wanted to make as a follow-up, and I was granted uh, access to anything you want there. Please, please, please expose the story. Uh, Eskimo, everyone on that ship should go to the doctor ASAP. I agree. Uh, anyone who's an expectant uh, mother, anyone who's pregnant, uh, anyone who finds out that they're pregnant in the next little while uh, should definitely see a doctor uh, because some of these chemicals that were being used on this ship and were being you know, applied on the surfaces of the ship um, are harmful. Uh, it could be uh, very harmful to uh, pregnant, uh, pregnant un to unborn children. I mean, it's just, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Uh, the fact that the doctor wants to charge two hundred dollars to see the doctor about a cough I have on the on board because of these chemicals up here. That's that's really rich. That's rich, really. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, a cruise line. We're behind you all the way. Safety is our number one concern. Uh, isn't that something that's really, really unfortunate? Um, and it's not, it's not, uh, not right. It's just not right. Um, absolutely unbelievable. Uh, yeah. So here we go. Uh, we continue on with this story. Uh, I'm so appreciative of, of a couple of you passengers who found me already, who've come around. I hope more will come and tell us this nightmare of what's been going on. Uh, it's just, it's just absolutely terrible and it's unacceptable. And, uh, you know, whatever amount of money that Norwegian thought they were saving by having these construction guys on these two cruises uh, prior to the uh, to the uh, dry dock, <laughs> whatever they thought they were saving by not paying the dry dock guys, uh, for example, if they thought they could get in five or eight or ten days of work, if they thought that that's how much this was, they thought it was five days of work was fifteen million in savings. You just lost more than fifteen million in bookings. <laughs> what do you think? If you, you're losing ten dollars for every dollar you thought you made, and it might run you a hundred. It, it's it, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing from what you thought. Terry says that we heard through another passenger that someone had racked up over ten thousand dollars worth of ship doctor's bills because they had several breathing treatments. What the heck is that all about? Are you kidding me? Uh, they ought to be paying the passenger $10,000 for the inconvenience of coming in. Uh, that's going to have to be reversed. Uh, there's going to be a lawyer needed here uh, for sure. Uh, I can certainly see a uh, legal case brewing for that passenger for sure. If I were that passenger, I'd be talking to lawyers ASAP. Uh, and uh, on the, I'm hoping that the, uh, the group on Facebook, I hope they're banding together and will find a couple of lawyers to do a class action. Uh, because they deserve representation. This is this is absolutely unforgivable. What's happened here? Uh, Debbie saying, "Oh, that will be refunded." Uh, well, well, I sure hope so, Debbie. Uh, at the very least, that has to be refunded. This is this is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, that Terry, that's really interesting. I appreciate you telling me. As I say, I only have so many hours in the day, and I'm on the air every day. I'm on the air six days a week, and so while I'm talking, things are happening on that site that I can't keep up on. Uh, and so I try to catch up in the evening and in the morning, and then inform my viewers what's going on again it's just amazing what's going on there just absolutely amazing uh I tell you folks cruising is a great holiday when it works <laughs> it's it's a great price generally speaking cheaper than a five-star resort on land and then there are the horror stories on land too uh, we we know about horror stories on land where people have a you know five-star vacation booked in in cancun mexico or puerto vallarta 
only to find that when they get there, the hotel they're staying in is under renovation and it's a mess, you know, and the pools are closed and no one told anybody, you know, we've heard those. Um, but this story today is not an inconvenient story. Uh, like Norwegian wanted to, everyone to believe it was. They thought it was an inconvenient story when they first released their 25% you know, credit. No, no, this is a, a, a human health issue. This is a life and death issue. And people are suffering from it right now. It's just it's just unbelievable. Damage has been caused. Iskew Park. Hi, Bruce. It's Iskew from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Six below Celsius and dark. Laugh out loud. I guess it is. Uh, Thunder, uh, Tommy saying, oh, he'll, oh, hell yeah. 10,000 for something they caused. Yeah, that should be refunded. Right on, Tommy. Tommy's on, on, on the side of the passenger, too. We'll find out how this goes. Unbelievable. Um, I've got some trivia questions tonight. I promised you as viewers we'll play some trivia. Uh, but any comments that come in, I'm more than happy to read them as we go. Uh, neglect, Tammy Ray, neglect. Yeah, thank you. Very, very much so. Uh, I got some tri trivia for you guys. So let's play a few trivia games here. Kill a bit of time and uh, have some fun with this. Try to lighten the mood a little bit. And uh, we'll stay on top of these comments as they come through because they are on. Be believable. Uh, first, uh, first question for you guys. Uh, since this, you know, since this is such a downer of a of a story, uh, some of us need to drink. And speaking of a drink, <laughs> here's a question for you. Tell me, uh, there are 15 answers to this question. Tell me the top wine producing countries on the planet Earth. I don't want to know about Mars or Moon, the Moon, or anything like that. Just on Earth, what 15 countries produce the most wine? on the planet uh but kind of curious to know what you guys think about that there are 15 correct answers to this question and uh nothing wrong with guessing we've got iskew park starting off with france i thought it was france too i figured i'd go with france uh, france is number two i thought it would be number one by a mile i mean you know those french you know they love their wines uh but it's not number one but well, it's number two uh if debbie's going i'm already drinking T tommy eaton italy number one italy is number one number one wine wine producer and Debbie Emanuel, the USA, number four. And then the West Morris in the same South Africa. And that is number eight. What Good one there, Wes. Uh, SQ Park, USA. Ch a sea lid keeper, France. Of course, we got it. S Swan, Greece. Greece. Um, we do not have Greece in the top 15. And yet they love their wine too. They're one of the earliest creators of wine. Uh, but they don't produce in volume <laughs> to make this top 15 list. France and Italy from Nancy. Uh, we got them both. Uh, Debbie Manuel, Spain. Uh, Spain is number three. Yes. Uh, Chile. Joe Honang is saying Chile. Number six is Chile. Good one. Australia from Charlie Baum. Australia. Uh, not on the list. Yes, it is. I was fooling you. It is on the list. Number seven. Still got that April Fool's in me. You know? Still got that one. Yes, number seven. You have now got Italy, France, Spain, the USA. That's the top four. You have Chile, Australia, and South Africa. That's six, seven, and eight. Got a bunch to go. Uh, Tammy Ray, I missed the question. What countries make the most wine in the world? Countries that produce the most wine, not the best, the most. <laughs> uh, Sea Keeper, Spain, we've got it. Uh, Galene is saying BC, Canada, the Okanagan. That's the world number one producer of wine, one of the top 15. Uh, not even in the top 15 for volume. Might be good stuff, but not in volume. Doesn't make the cut. Nancy Nolan, Australia, we have it. Sea Lid Keeper, Australia, we got Australia. Iskew Park, they drink it before they can make it into the bars. <laughs> they drink it before it can make it to the bars. <laughs> Iskew Park is saying Russia. He's thinking Russia is on the list. Russia is on the list. Number 12, Russia is on the list. Tommy Eaton, Sweden. Going with Sweden, uh, no, Sweden doesn't make the top 15. Debbie Emanuel, Japan, rice wine? Japan, maybe? Japan? Nope, nope, not enough rice wine for Japan to make the list. Tammy Ray, Italy, we've got it. It's the number one region in the world. Kathy Butler, hey, everyone just made it. Hope you've had some trivia fun. We just started, Kathy. Top countries making wine in the world. Get Take your guesses. South Africa from Sealed Keeper. Uh, South Africa, uh was already guessed at number eight. We've already got it. Uh, South America. Sylvia is saying South America, the country of South America. <laughs> I, I always give her a hard time because she gets the regions right. But I need specific countries in South America would, would help. Uh, South America, Sylvia. Uh, 
This cute park. I'm two for two. I quit. <laughs> Tammy Ray, USA, USA. Already guessed. Already guessed. Uh, Johnny Bomb, Portugal. Is Portugal on the list? Uh, yes. Number 11 is Portugal. And Nancy Nolan is coming up with Germany. Uh, yeah, number 10 is Germany. Let me tell you the exact, the answers you got right so far. You got Italy. You've got France. You've got Spain. You got the USA. Top four. You then got Chile, Australia, South Africa, Germany, Portugal, Russia. You are missing one, two, three, four, five to go. Five to go. Germany from Nancy, uh, we got. Brazil from Tommy Eaton. Uh, yeah, number 15, just made the list. Brazil. Norway from Kathy Butler. No, Norway is not on the list. Mexico from Tammy Ray. Mexico, not on the list either. No. Uh, we have four to go. I will tell you that um, they're all over the place. We have a South American country. We have an Asian country. We have a uh, couple of European countries. So there's a little mix and match going on here. Argentina is a guess, and that is a good guess. Sea Seakeeper, it is number five. They are uh, right behind the USA. So we go with Italy, France, Spain, USA, Argentina. Then we have Chile, Australia, South Africa. Those are the top eight. We're missing number nine. We've got number 10, Germany, number 11, Portugal, number 12, Russia. And we have number 15, Brazil. We need number nine, 13, and 14. We're looking for an Asian country for the number nine slot. Um, <clears throat> Kathy Butler's going with Iceland. Uh, sorry, no. Peru, no. Uh, we've got the South American country now. It was Argentina. Uh, Thailand from Kathy Butler. Darn good guess for uh, Asia, but nope, not right. Uh, and New Zealand from Seakeeper. Uh, sea no. We need one country in Asia. We need two countries in Europe. That's it. That's all we need. So Thailand is not correct. Uh, think of a big Asian country, like, you know, big. Um, Rome, uh, let's see, one, two. Yeah, two in Europe. Uh, and we'll see if we get anywhere there. Um, both of these countries in Europe were part of the Soviet bloc of countries in the old days when the Berlin Wall was still standing. They were considered behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, Tammy Ray, England, no. Uh, UK does not make enough wine to count. Belgium does not make enough wine to make the top 15. They produce wine, but not enough. But really, Belgium is a low-lying area. They don't have the quite the right topography for winemaking. India from Kathy Butler. That's a large Asian country, but not the one I'm thinking about. Uh, Ukraine doesn't cut it, although it is a former Soviet bloc country. Very good. China from Charlie Baum. You got it. China is a wine producer. Number nine in the world. Yeah. Uh, Romania. Uh, yes, Romania is on the list. See, uh, Keeper, number 13. I got one to go. One country in the Soviet bloc prior to the Berlin Wall coming down. Uh, one left. It's number 14 on the list. And let's see, Chechnya, no, or Czechoslovakia, Sicily, Portugal, Czechoslovakia, no, 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 no. We need one more. Uh, think about Soviet-run countries uh, or, or, or communist-run countries uh, that, uh, that were uh, run before the wall came down. Uh, this country is now uh, in the, um, the Eurozone, um, and it's a beautiful place to go for a holiday. Uh, but uh, you couldn't visit it easily. Well, you could have visited rather easily, actually. Even when the Soviet wall, when the Berlin wall was up, you could travel this country. Uh, it was easy to go to, and it was cheap. Uh, it's still cheap today to travel there. Czechoslovakia, no. Poland, no. Uh, Portugal, no, because that uh, that's never was behind the Iron War. Nina's got it. Hungary is the country. A very good. U Uzbekistan from Seakeeper. That's a darn good try. Those are the complete answers. Here's the list. We have Italy, France, Spain, USA, Argentina, Chile, Australia, South Africa, China, Germany, Portugal, Russia, Romania, Hungary, and Brazil. Those are the top wine-producing countries on the planet uh, right now. There you go. Okay, number two trivia question for this evening. Oh, moving right along, uh, I'm going to ask you to tell me the top countries, the countries that produce the most automobiles in the world, top auto manufacturing countries on the planet, where are cars made in this world, and uh, let's see how you do, we've got 20 countries, 20, you wouldn't have thought, I bet you didn't think there were 20, but 
There's more than 20, but these are the top 20. Uh, let's see who's making the most cars. Isku Park is coming right in here with Japan. And uh, uh, you're right. Uh, Japan is number three. Uh, then we have um, Nancy Nolan is starting with Japan. We got that. And then Nancy follows it up with the United States. And uh, Tommy was trying to, I think, trying to, trying to say USA too, but he went USE. <laughs> USA is is on the list. Uh, number two, uh, the United States is the second largest country making cars. Not number one. Not number one. Number two. Uh, Germany, uh, Nancy came in with. Number four is Germany. And Iskew Park came in with China, and that's number one. China is the number one producer of automobiles in the world. They produce more cars than America. Go figure. Uh, let's see here. Um, USA, USA, Tammy, USA, WUSA. Valen Martinez, USA. Hi, Valen. How you doing? You're new. Uh, Kathy Butler, Korea. No, you can't give me Korea. You got to give me either North Korea or you got to give me the other Korean. <laughs> Tammy Ray, a German. German. Uh, Tammy Ray, German. <laughs> Did you mean Germany? Because uh, if you meant Germany, it's already been guessed and it was a correct guess. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm going to credit you with that. The sealed keeper is going with South Korea, and yes, South Korea is number six on the list. Uh, Gaylene Davidson is asking about Mexico. Yep, number seven is Mexico. Uh, West Morrison, Germany, we've got it. Valen, Valen Martinez, we got Germany. Thank you. Sealed keeper, Italy. Uh, we've uh, we've got Italy here, don't we? Don't we have Italy? Yeah, number nineteen. Italy is nineteen. You think with all those cars they've got over there, those high end cars, they don't make a lot of them. They're exclusive Ferrari. Maseratis. Nice, nice. Uh, Debbie Manuel, Mexico. We've got it. Uh, S1, I'm getting my Atlas uh, from now on. Laugh out loud, Sylvia said. I'm getting it out. Scott Batchley, Japan. We have it. Nina Frank, Sweden. I was looking for Sweden on the list myself, but they don't make it. They're, they're not high enough on the list anymore. Uh, S1, uh, uh, Sylvia saying Germany. We got it. Isku Park, two, two for two again. I quit now. I got it. <laughs> Uh, we've got Heather Parsons here. Hi, Heather. India. India is on the list. Number five. Fifth most cars produced in the world are from India. They own Jaguar, by the way. India is owned by uh, – Jaguar is owned by an Indian-based company. Kathy Butler, South Korea. There you go. Yeah, we got South Korea, and thank you. You got it. Uh, Germany from Tammy Ray. There it is. Uh, Wes Morrison, Yugoslavia. You're talking about the Lada. You, you, yeah, Yugoslavia doesn't exist anymore. So the lot of doesn't exist either. <laughs> so no, no, nothing. Yugoslavia doesn't count. Uh, Tommy Eaton is wondering about France. And uh, France is number 11 on the list. Yes, France is 11 on the list. Valen Martinez is talking about Brazil. And uh, Brazil makes number 10 on the slot. Good guess there. Good one. Iskew Park, Great Britain, the United Kingdom, number 13. They used to be higher, but they're down to 13 now. Very good. Uh, Saudi Arabia. Do they make cars in Saudi Arabia? No. They Well, if they did, they don't make the top 20. How about that? Uh, Sealed Keeper, guess in Great Britain. We've got it. Tammy Ray is going Canada? What about what about Canada? Wasn't there a movie called What About Canada? Yes, Canada. You remember Free Trade with the United States? Yeah. Number nine. Canada is only number nine. The Americans think that Canada produces way more cars and steals American jobs. We're only the ninth largest in the world. Mexico is uh, is seventh. We're ninth, you know. Anyway, we're all we're all happy. It's all good. Um, Tammy Ray, NVM. Hmm. Nevada, Mexico. I don't know what NVM stands for. <laughs> Tammy, I need more help. Uh, Nina Frank, we sold out to China. There you go. Yeah, Chinese taking over. Heather Parsons, hi back, Bruce. Hi Heather, you're back. John B. Austria. No, uh, Austria is not on the list. Heather Parsons, Russia. Russia. Um, yeah, number 16. They just made it. Uh, uh, they're, uh, they're, 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 you know, four from the bottom. They made it. Russia's on the list. Seed Keeper Lattice didn't last long. Luckily, no, they didn't. <laughs> uh, S, uh, Sylvia's saying Dubai. The, no, Dubai is a city, and they're located in the United Arab Emirates, and that didn't make the list either. So I'm just taking you out of your misery. Uh, no. Australia. Iskew Park is asking about Australia. No, uh, there are there is car production in Australia, uh, but uh, not in the top twenty, unfortunately. 
Um, so there you go. Uh, let's see here. Let, how many we got? Let me tell you who you got. You've got China, USA, Japan, and Germany. You got the top four. You got India, South Korea, Mexico. That's the next three. So you got the top seven, actually. Uh, but you don't have number eight. Number nine is Canada. Ten is Brazil. Eleven is France. You got those. You don't have number, uh, let's see, where are we at? Um, you got the UK. You got Italy. You've got Russia. Okay. So we're looking now for one, two, three, four, five, six more. I need six more countries. Uh, Tina Hort is back. Tina Hort is back. Hi, Bruce. I'm back. Welcome back, Tina. Uh, it's nice to have you here from Toronto, I believe. If I don't, if I recall, were you just on a cruise? Uh, I'm trying to remember. You were on a cruise, weren't you? What ship? Where'd you go? Tell us. Kathy Butler, Philippines. Guess in the Philippines, what countries of the world make the most cars? Uh, that's the topic for you newbies who are joining in right now. And the Philippines don't make the cut. No. Uh, let me give you some hints. Uh, the guess was the Philippines just a minute ago. That's a good guess because in that region, in that region are one, two more. There are two other countries in that area that do make the list. Uh, Valen Martinez, I will say Argentina, but I think there's no way they make it in the top 20. Uh, Argentina is not on the list. You are correct. Uh, I think they do produce cars but they're not in the top 20. Very good. Uh, Sa uh, Saudi Arabia, no, doesn't make the list. Colombia, no. Russia, we got it uh, already. South Africa uh, does not make the list, no. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Turkey, sea, lid, uh, sea Keeper. Turkey, uh, yeah, 14 is Turkey. They're on the list. Uh, Malaysia, no. Japan, we've got. Taiwan, Taiwan. Uh, what a great guess, but no. Taiwan does not produce cars to make the top 20 list. Uh, everything is made in Taiwan, laugh out loud. <laughs> Kathy Butler said, everything's made in Taiwan. Uh, sea lid keeper, Iran. Yes, Iran is on the list at number 18. Um, and Spain from Nancy Nolan. Uh, Spain, we think we, uh, did we already have it? No, we don't. It's, it's on the list, number eight. You got number eight, Spain. We're down to one two three four countries two of which are in asia uh two in europe uh, it's as easy as i can give it to you spain sweden pakistan switzerland no 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 uh none of those uh two in asia two in europe uh let's see if you guys can come up with this um uh let's take a look yeah okay let's see if anyone else is coming around uh you already got china usa japan germany india south korea mexico spain iran canada brazil france italy united kingdom turkey russia you got all those well done vietnam vietnam new no no but close in the neighborhood is a country that'll do it belgium no no and it's not close slovakia is close uh, as a matter of fact, it's so close, it's good. It's the number 20 country, Slovakia, uh, the other half of Czechoslovakia, what used to be Czechoslovakia. Yes, number 20. We need one more uh, 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 European country, and Slovakia is a big hint. Uh, if you got Slovakia, you got the other one. I mean, come on. Uh, Burma, no. Hong Kong, no. Thailand, yes. Thailand makes the list at, uh, at number 12. Thailand makes the list at number 12. We have one asian country left one european country left and if you got slovakia you're going to get this one just think a minute slovakia what's the other one it's there think the berlin wall you'll get it you'll get it. montenegro no czech yeah czechoslovakia correct czechoslovakia is the other one so czechoslovakia and slovakia now what's interesting to me is czechoslovakia is one country Instead of being 15 and 16 or, or, or whatever it is, they would be higher on the list. But being two separate nations, they, they both still make the top 20. That's impressive. It's a small country in, in, in relative terms. Uh, Slovenia, no. Korea, no. We're looking for one Asian country. Um, uh, yeah, we're looking for one Asian country. It's the number 17 country on the list. Uh, and it's a big country. 700 million people uh, is the population of this country. In Asia, it's not China. We already got China. It's not Vietnam. We already got Vietnam. It's not Japan. It's not South Korea. Uh, we need one country with 700 million people. 
What is it? Isn't India? Isn't Pakistan? No, no. What country? Not Bangladesh? No, no. Uh, Singapore? No, that's five million. That's a that's a city state, kind of. Uh, they have a king that rules the country. Uh, what else can I tell you about this place? Uh, south of the Philippines? Yeah. Yeah, so for, Indonesia, we got it. Here it is, Indonesia. Thank you. We've got it. Laos, India. There we go. We got the list. Here's the final cut. It comes out of China, USA, Japan, Germany, India, South Korea, Mexico, Spain, Canada, Brazil, France, Thailand, UK, Turkey, Czech Republic, Russia, Indonesia, Iran, Italy, and Slovakia. Those are your top 20 car producers. We got one more to go. Iskew Park. <clears throat> One more to go. This one has 25 answers. 25 answers. You, you can just guess here. Uh, again, this is one of those days where the kind of news we're hearing is the kind of news that makes you want to take a drink. Uh, by the way, I want to say uh, thank you for all you guys who are watching tonight. We have 23 thumbs ups tonight. Thank you for the thumbs ups. If anyone can spare us a couple of those, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much for thumbs ups. Uh, here is our last trivia question of the evening. Get ready, kids. <laughs> Dave Horak, you advise not to go on a ship that just came off dry dock. Why not? David, uh, here's the answer. Uh, and, and, and we got a, an example coming up right now uh, in two weeks from now. The Norwegian sun, that is this nightmare cruise we've been just talking about that's going through the Panama Canal. and People got sick on board and been getting sick ever since. That ship's in dry dock right now. That ship is coming out of dry dock in two weeks on April the 19th. It's going to take a, a repositioning cruise from Seattle. It's going to go up to Victoria first, then come back down the coast, go underneath uh, through Mexico, down past Costa Rica, through the Panama Canal, and then all the way back up to uh, Cape Canaveral. And from Cape Canaveral, this ship, the Norwegian Sun, is going to do three and four day cruises to the Bahamas and to Cuba. Okay. <clears throat> that ship, I'm going to bet you, un unless Norwegian has learned their lesson, <laughs> I, I don't know if they have. But I wouldn't be surprised if on that cruise, there are still construction workers on that cruise because Norwegian was so bent, so hell bent on saving a couple of quick bucks. They put construction crews on the two cruises before the uh, dry dock cruise, dry dock session. And I'm telling you, I have a feeling they've got construction crews going to be on that ship finishing up the work from dry dock because they didn't get it done on time, or there's just so much to do and so little time to do it. And I worry that there will be paint thinners, paints, glues, adhesives, and all kinds of other chemical compounds in the public areas of the ship being used by workers to finish the painting of the lacquer on the handrails, maybe uh, painting some of the bar areas, maybe uh, painting some of the walls, uh, still laying down some of the tiles on the floor with those adhesive glues. Uh, that 18-day repositioning cruise could be a cruise you may want to avoid because if it's, if it's still drying out, if the ship is still technically drying out from the chemicals used on board the ship during dry dock with thousands of workers on that ship doing everything from soup to nuts, there could be people facing inconveniences. And the ones I worry about, there are two that I worry about. First group are the employees themselves that are stuck down below that have no access to outside air. All of their air that they breathe is filtered by the ship's uh, filtering systems. The second group I worry about are passengers, paying passengers on the inside rooms. They got inside rooms and even the ocean view rooms, they can't open those windows. They're stuck with an inside room or an ocean view room, and all the air they're breathing is provided from the ship filtration system that has been saturated with chemicals in dry dock and now might be suspect and might be infected again with caustic chemicals that these workers are using to get the job done in a hurry, 18 days until Port Canaveral. So that's why uh, uh, the ship, the cruise after dry dock is a cruise to watch out for. I've had time and time again, people talk about a vacation ruined because they got on a one-week cruise. They thought it would just be a one-week Caribbean cruise, uh, but they didn't realize the ship just came out of dry dock out of the Bahamas, came into Miami, picked up a bunch of passengers, went for a seven-day cruise to St. Thomas and uh, 
um, Saint Martin and maybe San Juan, Puerto Rico. It was going to be great, but there are 200 workers still on the darn thing, laying the carpet, dropping the tile, uh, finishing up installation of refrigeration systems. They didn't get it done on time. There were issues at the dry dock. There might have been a storm, and it delayed the ships bringing in the supplies they needed to get to the dry dock workers. It was delayed getting in. It got there the day before the ship was pulling out. The, di the dry dock is booked solid with the next ship waiting in line to get in. This ship's got to go. So all they're doing is loading the ship up on the decks, on the front of the nose of the ship, or down below deck, full of construction materials and workers. And then they're just putting them to work 24-7 to get the job done as soon as possible. They're hoping that in the first week of that first, that first week's cruise, they can get it all done. Well, sometimes the work is so extensive, it takes two weeks or three weeks to get it done. And passengers who are in flip-flops and bathing suits with a towel over their shoulder are walking by guys with hard hats, steel-toed boots, and they're drilling nails, and they're uh, sawing wood, and they're, there's dust everywhere, and it's a mess. And that's why the cruise after a dry dock, you generally avoid it. The cruise before a dry dock, you try to avoid it. That's the... It's a short answer, but it's it's not a short answer, is it? Yeah, it's quite a story. Uh, Tammy Ray, my work uh, work might not be completed. Tammy Ray, metal paint takes weeks to dry properly and air out. Nina Frank, listen to Bruce. David Horak, sea keeper uh, and dry docking in Canada, leverages their U.S. money with regards to the U.S. Canadian dollar. Exchange rate these days is about 30%. Right on. You got it. Cheaper to do it in Victoria. Cheaper to do it in Jamaica. Cheaper to do it in the Bahamas. Yeah. And in the Bahamas, or in Jamaica, or in third world countries, dry docking, you don't have all those pesky rules. We don't need no stinking rules about environment and the safety of workers. We have millions of workers. We lose 20 of them? Who cares? We got 100,000 more who want the job. Not in Canada. Can't do that in Victoria, though. But it is cheaper to do it in Victoria. Isn't that something? It's, it's amazing. Uh, David, you're welcome, David. He's saying that you're more than welcome. No problem. Iskew, uh, paint a small room with oil-based paints or stain and then stand in it for a few hours. Yeah, just <sighs> breathe that in for a while. And then smoke a cigar and really enjoy it. Oh, man, you're going down. <laughs> you're going down. Unbelievable. Okay, let's have a little sip. Uh, cheers to all of you. I'm having a little bit of Diet Coke here. Special thanks today to Wes Morrison uh, for your donation today on my Super Chat. For a little more of this stuff, I thank you very much for that. I haven't forgotten. Mm, that's yummy. Uh, brown fuzzy water is all that is. No sugar, no caffeine. It's just brown fuzzy water. Love it. Here's your third category, kids. Get ready. Here we go. Uh, 25 answers. Top beer producing countries. After a day like today, I need a beer, but I'm drinking my diet caffeine free. Go. Top 25 beer producing countries. Fire away your answers. Let's see how you do here. And uh, let's see who we think is number one. <laughs> here we go. The answers will be coming in shortly, I am sure. Thank you for the thumbs ups, you guys. Uh, I think right now I'm sitting on 31 thumbs ups. Oh, this is fantastic. Only two thumbs downs. No worries whatsoever. Uh, here come some guesses. Oh, man, they're coming faster than <laughs> my screen is disappearing. Germany and Germany from Iskew and Nancy. Uh, Germany is number four, fourth largest, not number one. You'd think, you'd think with Oktoberfest. Tammy Ray, Canada. We drink beer in Canada like you can't believe. We got way better beer than the Americans have. We got to be in the top 25. Are we in the top 25? We're number 21. Only number 21. You know how many beer commercials we watch in Canada? You'd think we're drowning in this stuff. Only number 21, but we're on the list. Kathy Butler, USA. Valen Martinez, Germany. Nancy Nolan, USA. All guests already. Nina Frank, Belgium. Yes, Belgium is on the list. I am certain of it. I thought, yeah, it just made a list of 25. Now, the Belgians love their beer. On a per capita basis, they drink beer. But in the world of how much beer for the country as a whole, they're number 25 in the world for production. That's I was surprised by that. I thought they'd be higher on the list. Debbie Manuel, USA. Wes Morrison, Belgium. Uh, Galen Davidson is here saying Germany. We got him. We got him. We got him. Kathy Butler, Belgium. We got him. Tammy Ray, Ireland? I'm looking. I'm looking. 
No, Ireland is not a volume producer. They're a quality producer, but they're not volume. They don't make the top 25. Sealed keeper is saying Holland. Talking about the Netherlands? I think you're talking about the Netherlands. Uh, let me take a look for the Netherlands. Yes, 15. Netherlands, Holland is on the list. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mexico from Debbie Emanuel. Mexico, yes. Number six, Mexico. Yeah, they produce beer. A lot of it. Stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty. Yes. Uh, should, ne should Nemo say that? Stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch that movie. <laughs> I'm famous. <laughs> Kathy Butler, Scotland. No, Scotland's part of the United Kingdom. So if you want to say the United Kingdom, you know, we could go with that. And if we go with the United Kingdom, number eight. The Brits love their beer and they drink a lot of it. There's a lot of them. Scotland has their share of that market. Uh, Germany from Tim, Jim Thomas. Jim, we've got Germany already. Thanks for the guess. Uh, let's see here who's guessing, who's doing what. Touchdown 821 is here. How you doing, Touchdown 821? Ireland. Ireland is the guess. And I'm looking at the list and Ireland is not on the list. I, I think I've done this already. They make quality stuff, uh, but they're not on the list for quantity. They don't make the top 25. Kathy Butler, Ireland as well. Iskew Park, England. We got it. Kathy Butler, Great Britain. Paul Willigus, England. Hi, you doing, Paul? Nancy Nolan, England. Heather Parsons, England. We've all got it. We've all got it. Kathy Butler saying, how about China, man? How about China? Number one producer of beer in the world, China. Number one. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what Trump thinks about that. Hmm. Uh, Australia. Jim Thomas is talking about Australia. Those Aussies love their beer, you know. Aussies, Aussies. They're not on the list. They don't make enough. They only got 21 million people. They don't drink enough. <laughs> they do drink enough. But if they had 50 million of them, you know, they don't, they don't produce enough? <laughs> Let's see that alone. John B., Switzerland. What about Switzerland? Are they a huge beer-producing country? They'd have to export almost all of it to make it. No, they're not on the list. Sorry. Ireland, we have it. Mexico, we've already done, I believe. Yeah, number six. Uh, Sweden from Nina Frank. Sweden. Sweden, Sweden, Sweden is uh, not on the list today. No. South Korea from Kathy Butler. Uh, South Korea is, uh, is it anywhere? Is it? Yeah. Number 19, South Korea. 19th largest beer producer. Uh, sea keeper, yay for the Molson Canadian rant. <laughs> yeah, you know, we get we get bombarded by Molson ads all the time, but we're only the, uh, you know, 21st largest producer of beer. I and mean, we're in nada, nothing. Uh, oh, uh, Sylvia's asking about France. Yes, France is on the list at number 24. They make wine, but they also make beer. How about that? I've never ordered a French beer, I don't think. Would it be like champagne? I don't know. I haven't ordered a French beer. Uh, Charlie Baum, China. We've already had China. It's the number one producer of beer. We haven't got the number two, the number three yet, guys. Uh, Holland, we've already got Holland, as in the Netherlands. Russia from Kathy Butler. She's wondering about Russia. Number five, Russians make and drink a lot of beer. I think it's vodka. Beer, too. Uh, Brazil from Paula K. Yeah, number three country is Brazil. Yes, ahead of Germany. Valen Martinez is talking about Spain. Number 10 is Spain. Very good. Brazil from Galen Davidson. We've got it. Switzerland, we've had a guest. Nancy, it's already been done, and it didn't make the list. Debbie Manuel, you can only be Nemo with your orange shirts. Ah, okay. Okay, I can't be Nemo with the blue shirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Bruce, your colors, it's definitely blue and white. Your colors are blue and white, Bruce. That's <laughs> Thank you very much for the fashion updates. I really appreciate it. I need all the help I can get. Uh, Nancy Nolan, Japan. Does Japan make beer and do they make enough? Yes, they do. Number seven, more than the Brits, more than the UK, Japan. Let me tell you who you have. So far, you've guessed the number one country, China. You've guessed number three, Brazil. Four is Germany. Five is Russia. Six is Mexico. Seven, Japan. Eight. United Kingdom, number 10 is Spain, uh, 15 is the Netherlands, 19 is South Korea, 21 Canada, 
and 24 France. 25 Belgium. Those are your guesses correctly done. I'm looking for number two. I'm looking for number nine, number 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's see what we got. Debbie Emanuel, what? What? China? China? Yeah, number one beer producer, China. We got over a billion people. Yeah, they, they need beer. They drink. <laughs> wouldn't you drink if you lived in China? If you were a Chinese, wouldn't you be drinking? I mean, my goodness. I'd be drinking if I were Chinese. Uh, Tammy Ray, Australia. We've got a guest. It didn't cut, didn't make the cut. Uh, Gaylene Davidson. What about Poland? Yeah, number nine. Poland drinks beer. Yeah, they make it. They drink it. Tammy Ray, India. India. Yes, number 20. India. You wouldn't think India, would you? Yeah, number 20. Uh, Tammy Ray, try to think where wheat is. Uh, the steaming bean, MZ. MZ. Got me. Uh, MZ. Um, Mozambique. Mozambique. I don't know where the MZ is. The steaming bean, Brazil. What about Brazil for beer? It's got to be on the list. It's got to be, don't you think? Brazil, with all those Brazilians, you know, there's, yeah, well, it is. It's number three. We've already guessed it. That's why I, I, it's already there. Uh, Sylvia, finally, I got a country instead of a city. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. The steaming bean, Poland. We just had it. Uh, John B., Den Denmark. Not Denmark. Denmark. That's the other. That's the other Denmark. <laughs> uh no denmark denmark uh didn't make the cut uh didn't make the top 25 they make quality beer just not enough of it they don't make the you know the heavy duty swill they only make the premium stuff so it's in limited numbers a uh, national did someone guess austria um i thought someone did and uh it's it's not going to help anybody uh it's not on the list uh argentina from kathy butler argentina uh yeah number 23 is argentina debbie manuel where the heck is the usa number two number two is the usa number two beer maker budweiser miller hello is anybody home in america today yes united states is number two and we've got a guess finally here's nina frank guessing czech republic and she's right the Czech Republic is number 22, and they make quality stuff, too. And they make a lot of quality stuff. The steaming bean, a Cronenberg is French. There you go, Cronenberg. There we are. That's a French beer. A uh, Wes Morrison, Barbados. Don't they make a bunch of beer in Barbados? No. Sorry, Wes. It's not on the list. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven to go. And uh, let me tell you where you got to go for this. Um, let me tell you what we can do for you guys. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, I'm yawning. I got two of those. Okay, there's two in South America. Two countries in South America you haven't guessed for me yet. Mexico we've already got. USA we've got. Barbados, no good. Uh, and then uh, I've got a uh, – I've got uh, – looks like I've got two countries – I've got two countries in Africa. Yeah, I have two countries in Africa making beer that you guys haven't guessed yet. Uh, I've got a, uh, I've got at least uh, one European country. I have an Asian country. I've got two Asian countries still that you haven't guessed. So we got a few regions of the world: South America, Asia, and Europe. We're looking for nothing North America anymore. So forget Mexico and forget Panama and North. Uh, you got to go south. Uh, uh, Debbie Manuel says, I drink because I live in California. Well, yeah, you know, those taxes. Look at the, how, how you're supporting your state by drinking there. You know, it's fantastic. You buy gas there, you're helping the state. You're drinking, you're helping the state. But drinking is cheap in California compared to uh, Canada. I mean, you can buy a big bottle of, of, uh, of uh, what's that called? The rum that my wife loves, Bacardi. You buy a giant bottle of Bacardi at a Costco for like 15 bucks can't believe that. that's $55 here. Easy, easy $55. Yeah, we, we have free health care in Canada. Guess where it comes from? Gas, booze, cigarettes. Uh, you know, you, you, you smell gas, makes you sick, you need a doctor. You drink too much booze, you get sick, you need a doctor. Smoke too much, you get sick, you need a doctor. So we put the tax into to the cows come home, and that's how we pay for health care for everybody. So easy. 
you guys could do that. You could. They do it in Europe. Just say it. Don't worry about it. Uh, Jim Rice. Rice wine should be China. Uh, it, well, maybe it is because that's why it's number one. China's number one producer of beer. Uh, Nina Frank. Russia? Uh, no. Russia is uh, not still needed. Uh, I think we've already got Russia. Uh, didn't we already do Russia? Russia, Russia, Russia. I thought we had Russia done already. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, number five. Russia was already guessed. Uh, the steaming bean, NZ. New Zealand, maybe? Uh, no, not on the list. New Zealand, not. Nancy, no. Seakeeper, Madagascar. No, no. A steaming bean, Sweden? No. Kathy Butler, Norway? No. Kathy Butler, Iceland? No. Nancy Nolan, Rush, Rushua? No. Nancy Nolan, sorry, Russia? No, we already got it. We already got it. Thailand. Gaylene Davidson is guessing Thailand. And uh, yeah, number 17 is Thailand. That's one of the two Asia countries down. Kathy Butler's guessing about Peru for a South American country. I need um, two South American countries, and that's not one of them. Uh, Kenya from Tammy Ray, no. Kathy Butler, Chile, no. Paul Wilgus, you're slipping, Bruce. USA was guessed way back. I apologize if I missed it. Uh, uh, for whatever reason, I missed it. Nancy Nolan, Colombia. Yes, Colombia, number 10. We got it. Uh, we need one more South American country. Um, South Africa is a guess. Correct. South Africa is a South African country. And we are now down to an Asian country. Uh, we need a European, a uh, African, a South American. We got like one of each is what we're looking for. I think I've got that right. Yeah, we need one of each. Uh, wow, here we go. Let's see. Uh, Kenya, Chile, you're slipping, Bruce. Uh, Colombia, Colombia, South Africa, South Africa, Kenya, Thailand. Uh, we've got, we've got Thailand. Uh, Malaysia, Indonesia. There it is. Indonesia is, 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 isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? No, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, no, it's not Indonesia. We've, we may have already had it. Um, we're not looking for Indonesia. Not it wasn't even on the list. Sorry, not even on the list. No, Japan. No, we've been. It's been guessed, and it's number seven. Uh, drinking is cheap compared to California gas. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, Turkey. No, Turkey's not on the list. Steaming bean. Venezuela. Uh, yeah, the the country of Venezuela. Number eighteen. Uh, maybe we should produce a bunch more of that stuff and get out of the mess they're in. <laughs> you know, ex export it for cash. I don't know. Uh, Paul Wilkes, yeah, hey, booze is way expensive in Canada. I worked in a liquor store in Florida, and the Canadians used to buy tons to take back home. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know it. Uh, we do. Steaming Bean, Argentina, no. Steaming Bean, Belgium, no. Isque Park, Chile, no. Belen Martinez, Paraguay, no. Uh, Charlie Baum, Namibia, no. Mo Nancy, Mozambique, no. I'm looking for an Asian country. I'm looking for a European country and an African country. Everything else has been done. So forget about South America. Give me a, 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 a European, an Asian, and an African. And we got it. Namibia, Mozambique do not count. The, uh, the uh, African country is a very heavily populated country. Uh, the European country um, is not heavily uh, populated, but it's in the news all the time. The uh, Asian country has about 80 million people living in it. Uh, Colombia, Nigeria, and Tanzania. Nigeria is correct for the African country. Kathy, you you got it. Nancy, you got it as well. Steaming bean went with Kenya. Uh, so did, uh, so did, excuse me, so did Tanzania. Steaming bean with Tanzania. Egypt from Kathy Butler, Kenya, and Philippines from Gaylene. Those are all incorrect. I need an Asian country with 80 million people. Philippines is a good guess for that. I need a, a European country. Um, and uh, this country was also behind the Berlin Wall at one time. It was a Soviet-dominated state. Um, that's a hint there. Uh, the Asian country um, uh, used to be a divided country, but is no more. It's now one. Uh, see if anyone gets these here. Nigeria, Nigeria. We've uh, we're, we're, we got it. Uh, we're looking for two countries: a a a, a, a European. And an Asian country. Hungary, no. Nigeria, we've got. Hungary is, is close. It's not too far away from Hungary. Hungary, uh, waiting for any more guesses. Uh, my people are getting tired. Two guesses to go, and we're done. 
Um, let's see here. Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnam is one of those guesses. Number 12, Vietnam. A lot of beer made in Vietnam. Ireland, we've been guessed a million times over. Uh, this country was behind the Berlin Wall, part of the Soviet bloc. Uh, and it's in the news a lot. Uh, Americans follow this country a lot. Um, uh, especially in the last few years, uh, we've been watching this country. Ireland, Turkmenistan, and Romania. No, no, no. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Americans are supporting this country in its efforts. Here we are. Betsy Lane got it. Uh, kind of. Ukraine. <laughs> Ukraine. It is the Ukraine, number 13. That completes the list. Let me read the winners or the list off to you. Top beer producing countries. China is number one. United States is number two. Apparently, I missed the U.S. right off the get-go. Brazil, number three. Uh, Germany, number four. Russia, number five. Mexico is number six. Stay thirsty, my friends. Uh, Japan, the United Kingdom, which includes Scotland, with Northern Ireland, uh, and Wales all together. Number nine is Poland. Ten is Spain. You'd think wine-producing country for Spain. Uh, number 11, South Africa. Number 12, Vietnam. Number 13, Ukraine. Number 11, uh, sorry, number 14 is, is Nigeria. Number 15, Netherlands. The 16th country is Colombia. Uh, 17 is Thailand. 18 is Venezuela. Number 19, South Korea. 20 is India. I'm amazed they're even on the list. Number 21 is Canada. I can't believe we're that low compared to all the ads we get bombarded by. Czech Republic, the the uh, the Czechoslovakian Republic is number twenty-two. Uh, number twenty-three is Argentina. Number twenty-four is France, and number twenty-five is Belgium. And uh, Belgians love their beer, as do the Netherlanders or the Dutch. Uh, but they're not in the top ten. They are uh, way down there. Belgium, number twenty-five. There's your, there's your uh, group right there. Um, uh, Tammy Ray went with Iran. <laughs> Jim Thomas, how about Syria? And uh, Betsy Lane, sorry about the tight spelling. Don't worry about the spelling. It worked. There you go. That's our, our show for the day. We've got uh, the trivia done. We've talked about the Norwegian Sun. We had two special guests today who were on that ship for two of those cruises. Am I glad they came by? I thank them so very much for joining in and letting us know what they saw themselves, what they witnessed. Unforgivable from Norwegian. We'll have to see if this offer is for real. What's going on? Debbie Manuel. Oh, such great questions as usual. Good night or good day to all. Chat again tomorrow. Thank you, Debbie Manuel. Thank you for your kind contribution to my Super Chat channel. Thank you very much. Isq Park, uh, Monaco. <laughs> they drink it, but they don't make it. Uh, Steaming Bean. India makes a good beer called King Fusher. Hmm, how about that? Nancy Nolan. Thanks, Bruce. This was fun. Thank you, Nancy, for coming by. I loved it. We had a good time today. Thanks for the thumbs up to you guys. Uh, we really, I really appreciate those. Looks like we're coming in at 33 thumbs up. It's pretty good. That's great for the late show. And I'm on tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Oh, thank God it's Friday. I'm on tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern time. Looking forward to talking to you guys. Update you on what's going on in the cruise game and anything else. And then Saturday at 2 o'clock, I'm on for my Saturday 2 p.m. show. And tell your friends. Uh, we'll do trivia on Saturday. And uh, you got friends of yours who think they're so hot on trivia. Think they're good. Let's try some trivia on Saturday. We'll have some fun with them. Uh, we'll have fun with everybody. Nancy saying goodbye. Scott Batchy saying goodbye. See you, Scott. Kathy Butler, good night. Paula Kay, thanks, Bruce. Good night. Good info. Jim Thomas, try again for a thank you again for a good show. Thank you, Jim, and thank you for your for your uh, super chats. Love it. Uh, Steamy Bean King, uh, Kim, Kim Fisher. <laughs> thank you, Steamy Bean, for coming by today. Nancy Nolan, good night. Uh, thank you for everybody else who popped in today. Really had a good time. I'm going to take some, uh, finish my work now, get this posted, and I'm going to rest, and I'm going to sleep like a log tonight because I am pooped. It's been a busy one for me, and I'll be at it again tomorrow. Have a great evening, everybody. Nancy Nolan saying goodbye. Nina Frank saying goodbye. Thanks, Nina from Sweden, for coming out. Have yourselves a good one, everybody. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Saying thank you for joining me today for two shows, my 5 o'clock show, my 8 o'clock show. Had a great time. Isq Park, you take care, buddy. I will see you guys tomorrow, Friday, 5 o'clock Eastern time and Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Have a good evening, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.